Hello, welcome to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Spencer Limbach at Spencer underscore JL. And uh, we'd like to welcome you to Kershaw Day. Uh, Kershaw against the Mets Day. One of the better Kershaw days you can get. And uh, Vegas um, obviously agrees, as they always do, and Clayton Kershaw's on the mound. He's a minus 270 favorite, a six run total. And that's with Noah Syndergaard on the other side, who's a pretty fine pitcher in his own right. So. Um, I mean, I, I've even seen a couple five and a halfs in a couple places, mm-hmm. which is just what I have. insane. So, um, depending on where you get your odds, doesn't really matter. He's a huge favorite, and it's a tiny total, about as small as you're ever going to see. I mean, he's your obvious top option. It's really not close in any way, shape, or form. It's it's Clayton Kershaw, and you got to play him in your cash games. And uh, due to his price tag, I mean, twelve thousand three hundred dollars. You wonder how highly owned he'll be in tournaments, but I mean, I'll still have some exposure in GPPs also. Yeah, and if you click them in, you basically have 2,800, 2,900 per position. So um, you can build a pretty decent lineup off of that. There's some cheap guys we'll get into um, that can help you squeeze them in, especially for cash games. Um, So it's Kershaw, as usual, for majority of my action. Um, But if you're pivoting off of him, there's a couple guys a little bit cheaper. One of them's Tanaka. Um, I know he comes with a fair amount of risk at home in Yankees Yankee Stadium. Um, sometimes he likes to give up the home run ball, especially to right-handed bats this year, it seems. He's been struggling as of late, so he's more of a risk-reward play. Um, but as we've seen, Tampa, they're just not hitting the ball, with the exception of Corey Kluber, some bloop singles here and there yesterday. Um, they almost got no hit by Carrasco, so... Um, you look into it that way, I think Tanaka makes an okay GPP swerve with some upside. Um, otherwise, looking down the list, I think your second cash game option is Michael Waka. He is 8.6K at home versus San Diego. Um, the Padres ranked 26th overall in Woba against righties, um, third in strikeout rate. So, I mean, you have to love that. At home, should get some good run support as um, his counterpart, uh, Kashner has been struggling very bad recently, so um, he's in a fine spot. If you don't want to go Kershaw or you want to, you know, load up on the best stacks you want for tournaments, um, I think Waka is the guy that you want to build around. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, I, really, any pitcher right now against San Diego, and obviously he's a above average pitcher. Um, they're just not hitting. They're just like Tampa Bay there. So um, an interesting tournament option we know with big upside is Chris Archer. He's more expensive than Tanaka, obviously, also in Yankee Stadium. And um, even his last game wasn't particularly good, give up some runs, but still got 10 Ks. And that's uh, the fourth time in his last seven starts that he has 10 plus. So we know he's got that big time upside. Um, had a pretty good game against New York uh, last time we faced him on May 12th. Um, I believe Tanaka pitched that same game as well. Mm, no, never mind. Different game. But either way, um, Chris Archer's a guy, huge upside as always. So I really like targeting him as well. Um, Outside of that, there's not a whole lot of guys to like. Um, If you look at cheap guys, all these guys are guys that you want to pick on. So I think the guys that we mentioned throughout the middle there are some guys I'll get. And I'll also throw out Jesse Chavez. Um, Hasn't been great in his last two starts, but we saw his upside, coincidentally, against the Padres. 11K, seven innings a couple starts ago. And this is a Seattle team that just continues to not hit the ball. Um, They're not quite as bad as the Padres right now, but nobody on that team really producing – and obviously it's in Oakland, so you know mistakes turn into to, uh, routine outs in this big ballpark. So I think that he's an interesting tournament option as well. Right. Uh, one more guy real quick, U- Ubaldo Jimenez. He's been very, very good lately. Um, seven plus Ks in the past three. He gets the White Sox tonight, who we know, aside of Jose Abreu, who hasn't been that good recently either. Um Pretty soft offense. Um, you don't like love that it's in U.S. Cellular, but he's a guy who's hot. Um, his price has crept up. I'd rather take Waka for a similar price point, but I think a lot of people will follow that logic tonight. So just be aware that Jimenez has some upside, um, and he'll probably have a lower ownership percentage. Yeah, I mean, he's got a nice strikeout rate in the season, 24.3%. Um, like you mentioned, and it, it is in uh, U.S. Cellular also, like you said, but... Uh, only .72 home runs per nine, so he's done a good job keeping the ball in the mm-hmm. ballpark also. So um, that kind of mitigates that concern a little bit. So I'm with you. I think he's a fine play also. Um, catcher options now as we move on. There's uh, some interesting ones. I think if you're playing Kershaw, 
Um, you're going to need to get a cheap guy. Sal Perez just makes a lot of sense. $2,400. Um, he's, he's at home against Tommy Malone, who's been a, a pretty good pitcher. But we know Sal Perez, one of the better catchers in the game against left-handed pitching. And he's near men's salary. So I think he just makes a lot of sense for you there. A couple other guys you can consider. You're always considering Victor Martinez. His price still pretty fair. Went over 5 yesterday, but $3,400 surrounded by some big hitters against Andrew Hutchison, who's been pretty good, but also prone to implosion. So if Detroit gets it going, you got to think that he's going to be a big part of it as well. Right. Um, my favorite catching option is Matt Waiters against John Danks. Um, not much of a surprise there as, I mean, if you've seen this podcast before, we love to pick on John Danks. Um, and usually it comes with a lot of success besides that random complete game shutout, but I'm not really paying much attention to that. Um, Matt Waiters, switch hitter, usually bats fourth or fifth in the lineup. He's a lot better against lefties than righties. I think he has like a two or a, yeah, 358 Woba and like a 230 some ISO. Um, so great power against lefties. U.S. Cellular only enhances that. 3.2K. I think he's the catcher you want to try to get in. Um, otherwise, if you can't, Sal Perez is the best cheap play that I have. Also like uh, Jonathan Lucroy at Great American Ballpark, Ballpark against Lorenzen. 3K is an okay price point. And my tournament pick is Evan Gaddis, 3.4K um, in Boston. Um, I think he can really do some damage there with the monster in left field um, against Masterson, who's a subpar pitcher. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. And then I'll throw out one more guy, Wellington Castillo. Yeah, um, love him. Been traded about 100 times this season, was struggling earlier in the year, but since he came over to Arizona, he's been hitting the ball really well. And um, we saw him bat fifth the other day. Should have a nice lineup spot against Kyle Kendrick, who is just god-awful against everyone. Most home runs allowed per nine innings of any pitcher in the world. So you want some Arizona exposure, and that's a good way to get, I won't say cheap, but cheaper exposure yeah. to uh, Kyle Kendrick. And speaking of exposure to Kyle Kendrick, that is not cheap. Paul Goldschmidt, $5,200. You certainly aren't going to be able to get him in a, a cash game with Clayton Kershaw, but got to get yourself some exposure in tournaments. Um, we know that Goldschmidt crushes lefties, but uh, I don't know if you've seen his numbers against righties. He's uh, pretty damn good against righties as well, so definitely a guy that you're going to be looking towards. Um, David Ortiz is going to be a popular play, probably a lot in cash games. Um, he, he has a fine matchup against Dan Straley, who's just been awful. Um only thing with David Ortiz is pretty much he finds the seats where he doesn't, and not a whole lot else. But 2900 a fine price for him. And then a guy that I like who's been hitting pretty well gets Jay Happ. He hits lefties really hard. Billy Butler, $2,800. Um, he's got extra base hits in four of his last five games. Not a guy that you feel good about putting in your lineup most times, but he's been consistent. And, you know, this is an Oakland office that hits righties or hits uh, doesn't hit lefties well as a whole. But uh, Butler is one of the few that actually does. Yeah, um, the the only thing about him is I don't love his price point, 2.8K. I think he's a pivot off of Ortiz, um, kind of taking a calculated risk there. If Ortiz doesn't show up, Butler somehow does, then you'll be ahead of the pack. Um, but I think Ortiz is the cash game option you feel most comfortable with. Um, against Dan Straley making a spot start today in Fenway Park, that's a very good uh, environment for him. He had a homer last night. Um, you just, I mean, I mean, you feel good about his upside. He, he's not the most reliable play, but the price point plus Kershaw, I think he makes a lot of sense for cash games. Um, otherwise, I like Adam Lind as a tournament pick, um, and he's a tournament pick only because of his price, 4K, really creeping up there, but he's against Michael Lorenzen today. Um, even though Lorenzen's only pitched 21 innings against lefties, he has a 417 Woba um, in Great American Ballpark, so Adam Lind... Crushing the ball lately results in a higher price point, but still someone to look at if you're you know going down away from Kershaw, looking at a tournament option. I like Adam Lind. Um, otherwise, one more tournament option on the other side of the spectrum. Um, if he's in the lineup, you'll need to see if he's in, is Kenny Vargas for Minnesota. Um, he has a lot of power. As we know, Jeremy Guthrie loves to give up power. 318 Woba against lefties. Um He's a fly ball pitcher. Obviously, Kauffman Stadium, not the best home run hitting environment, but Vargas has the necessary power to hit one out. So check if he's in the lineup. I think you can maybe look to him, um, you know, trying to catch lightning in a bottle for minimum salary. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. And then also throw out Joey Votto. His price is down once again, $3,400. Gets Mike Fires. 360 will be allowed to lefties this year. 
gives up a ton of home runs and long balls. So um, I'm looking at him also in Great American. And yeah, Fires actually ranks first in um, hard hitting contact rate. Yep, and that's so, all Votto does. It, yeah, he's he's first, and I think uh, Kyle Kendrick is third or something. So both those guys, when they get hit, they get crushed. Yep, with you there. Uh, second base options today. There's some interesting ones. Obviously, um, a lot of people are going to be looking at Jimmy Paredes once again, and I, I like him. I don't love his price tag at $3,400. I think you're of the same thinking there. Um, mm-hmm. Ben Zobris, another guy who's been hitting the ball pretty well, and uh, he gets Jay Happ, who's been okay, but also prone to implosion at times, of course. And then um, a couple other guys who you just really don't like their price tag, like Scooter Jeanette you would, you would like for the reasons you mentioned with Michael Lorenzen earlier, but 3100 is not a price I'm going to be paying for him. Um, I really like Colton Wong at $3,100. Should be leading off once again. Gets Andrew Kashner, who you mentioned earlier, has been struggling, but big time against lefties. 394 will be allowed in 10 home runs this year. So, cold long guy, I really like at 31. I have a question for you. Um, how do you feel about Neil Walker? Uh, it, it depends. I mean, if he's up in the lineup again, I think he's okay, but they got a big price jump. Um, he's mm-hmm. had a couple good games in a row, of course, but I mean, he also batted seventh yesterday, so. I think he's going to be a popular play. I mean, he's, I he's hit the ball That's really well. That's what I'm well. saying. But yeah, he's you got 17.5 points, 7.5 points uh, past two games, four hit games each. Um, I think a lot of people are going to follow that. I don't know if I'm going to. Um, I think around the same price range, I like Cesar Hernandez, yep. who is now a second baseman, um, was in the outfield, still a very nice price point. And if you look at what he's been doing, just multiple hits, Stolen base, multiple stolen bases, extra base hits. He does everything. Scores a lot of runs. And um, Atlanta's Julio Teheran is, uh, I mean, he's an okay pitcher overall. He's a pretty decent pitcher, um, I'd say above average. Um, but he has a 351 wall against left-handed bats. And Cesar Hernandez batting second, switch hitter. Um, I think he could, you know, slap him for a couple base hits. And um, if A.J. Brzezinski is behind the plate for Atlanta, he is notoriously bad at throwing runners out, trying to steal bases. So I think this is one of those games, if Hernandez reaches a few times, very good possibility he gets a couple stolen bases too. Yeah, and we looked up the numbers earlier. He's allowed 38 stolen bases and 45 attempts in 49 games this year. So like That's you said, huge. people are going to run rampant on him. I feel like I yeah. could swipe the bag off A.J. Brzezinski right now. Um, two other guys I want to mention, Runet Odor. He does get a tough matchup against Garrett Richards, but $2,700 at home. Been hitting the ball really well. And then Aaron Hill at 2,400 if you want a cheap piece of Kyle Kendrick down there. Um, not the hitter that he once was, but near minimum salary. I don't mind him. Yep. Uh, third base options. I love Todd Frazier. You mentioned the hard contact rate with Mike Fires. Also the great ballpark. Also the fact that Todd Frazier just has a stupid amount of power. So you got to like him at $4,500 here. Um, other options. Um, I'll save one guy for you that I know you really like. Uh, I really like Matt Carpenter. Already mentioned Cashner struggles against lefties. He's $3,100. This is a guy that was $4,000 every night um, a month or so ago. Getting him at $3,100 makes him an awesome cash game play tonight. Probably my favorite cash game play when you consider his price. Yeah, I mean, that, he's very comfortable um, right in that salary range. Um, you have to like it. And like you said, Aunt, uh, Cashner struggling against lefties, struggling against everyone lately. Um, so I think the Cardinal bats are in a nice spot. Um, otherwise, I think Manny Machado is the top overall play at the position against John Danks. Uh, no surprise there, righty-lefty matchup. But the 4,200 tag, I'm kind of having trouble blending in with Kershaw. Um, so I think you need to just kind of weigh your options and consider, like we said, there's a lot of um, more favorably priced options sitting down there in nice spots. Um, and one more I want to throw out is Luis Valbuena. He's more of a calculated risk because, I don't know, he, he's one of those guys who does nothing or will belt, you know, two or three home runs. He's, he's just, that's his profile, that you know what you're getting with him. He's 3,400 against Masterson, and um, even though Masterson was good last game, that was against the Rays in Tampa. So, I mean, let's take that with a grain of salt. He still has a 345 Woba against left-handed bats over the past three seasons. Um, and there's a reason he lost his rotation spot. So um, I like Valbuena in Fenway. That's a hitter-friendly park. I think the Astros and Red Sox are in line to put up some runs. I think that's a nine or a nine and a half over/under. So right up there amongst the highest of the day. So um, 
I think Balboina, I really like him. I don't think a lot of people will be on him. Yeah, and like you mentioned, half of his hits are extra base hits. Ha- exactly 26 yeah. of his 52 are either so, doubles or home runs. So, yeah, I mean, it, when he hits a single, with him. Yeah, yeah, he hits a single that wasn't intentional. He, he's not out there to try to hit singles. So, um, As we move on here to shortstop, of course, some options that you like. J.J. Hardy is going to be a popular play, and rightfully so. $2,600, been hitting the ball well. Already mentioned John Danks, and he is just... Awful in every in every way. Take that however you'd like. And uh, so <laughs> JJ Hardy's a guy that a subtle jab. Yeah, JJ Hardy's a guy I'm gonna be playing quite a bit, rightfully so. I mean, he's just been really really good. I also like Xander Bogarts, who's been yes. hitting the ball really well. Got a nice lineup spot, twenty seven and nine. I know there's a uh, a cheaper guy that that you point out to me earlier that uh, I think is a great play as well. So who's uh, who's your cheap sneaky play here? Okay, super sneaky cheap play, Eduardo Escobar. Um, against Jeremy Guthrie, as we said, as everyone who plays Daily Fantasy knows, we want to target left-handed bats against Jeremy Guthrie. And Escobar, um, he's a switch hitter. He's been batting fifth or sixth in the lineup. Um, you'll obviously need to check where he's at. But I don't I don't think that really matters because he's going to be sixth, seventh, around that range. Um, if he moves up a spot, great. If he moves back a spot, I mean, you're still taking a risk either way. But he's been crushing the ball lately. Um you know, every time he hits it, it's just jumping off the bat. And, I mean, that's what you like to see going up against, going into a matchup against Jeremy Guthrie. Um, I mean, you look at last night, he had a double, he had a triple. Um, in other ballparks, they could have been home runs, too. So, you like the way he's making contact. You love the matchup. I think he's a very sneaky pick at, you know, shortstop doesn't have many slam dunk plays. I mean, you like Hardy, you like uh, Bogarts, but I think... Escobar, I, I really like him tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good call. And uh, as we move to the outfield, um, your, your BVP special today is Brett Gardner, who's actually had a lot of success against Chris Archer, one of the few guys who has 7 for 18 with four extra base hits. So n- certainly won't be playing, paying for him in my cash games, but I think he's a good tournament option uh, despite the tough matchup. Um, David Peralta is the guy that I'm going to be getting in a lot of my lineups. $3,900 gets Kyle Kendrick, who's awful against lefties. He's awful against righties. And Peralta is just... He's on fire recently. You look at his last 10 games, four multi-hit games, two homers, a couple triples, some doubles, stolen base. I mean, he's doing it all right there. And I think a lot of people will be on A.J. Pollock instead of David Peralta, one, because he's cheaper, and also because, you know, he's he's the more popular name. And uh, this season, Kendrick does have worse splits against righties than lefties, but David Peralta is the guy that I'm getting in most of my lineups tonight. Yeah, I love him. Um and, I mean, I, I think Arizona is one of the higher projected scoring teams, too. So you'll definitely want to um, try to find a way to get um, some Diamondbacks exposure tonight. Um, looking down the list, I think Adam Jones is uh, one of the better cash game options tonight. Um, you have that righty-lefty against John Danks. I know he hasn't done much lately, but I think his floor ceiling combination just in this matchup, in this ballpark, and the price, 3.2K, I think that's just a very safe cash game pick. Albeit, he will be popular, so I think you can fade him in tournaments. Um, and there's enough options around there that you can, you know, do so with some shred of confidence. I don't think he's a must-play for um, tournaments, but I'm going to have him locked into cash games. Otherwise, if you want to look at the very cheap bargain territory, we have Cole Calhoun, 2.3 against Chichi Gonzalez, who's finally... Uh, showing his true colors. I think he has nine earned runs in the past two starts. Nine or 11, it's 11, actually, in 12 innings over the past two starts. So after that crazy, you know, beginning to his run that he had where he was striking out two hitters yet giving up nothing, um, he's finally, you know, getting hit. Yeah. And uh, I think Cole Cahoon, you know, wedged in between Mike Trout and uh, Albert Pujols, very favorable lineup spot. I love him at 2.3K. Um, a couple more guys. I think Steve Pierce is a sneakier option to this Baltimore stack if you're going that way. He mashes lefties, but he hits down in the order in like usually 7th or 8th. And a lot of people shy away from that because a suboptimal lineup spot. With him, it only takes one swing of the bat, and he has a very good chance of um, you know achieving upside against John Danks. I like him 2.4K. Otherwise, another Baltimore righty, um, Nolan Raymold is minimum salary. Um, I think you can look to him. I mean, you can look to any. Are you right-handed by chance? Yes. 
All right, you can you can roster Big Italy forty two against John Danks tonight. Put me in, coach. Um, right, righty, righty, lefty matchup against John Danks. So, um, yeah, Nolan Raymond two point two K. You don't love the pick, but you love the matchup is the is the type of thing, and, and you love price. the ballpark. So yeah, in in minimum salary, I, th- I think that's a nice pick there. Yeah, I completely agree there. I think it'll be a pretty popular play, especially if he gets second in the lineup again. Um, is Manny Tomas at thirty three hundred is another great tournament option that I like. I also like Jason Hayward at thirty five hundred dollars, um, picking on that Cashner struggles against lefties again. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. Those cheap guys, great spots, and then I'll throw out one more guy. Gerardo Parra, $2,600 against Michael Lorenzen. He's been hitting the ball very well recently. You already mentioned Lorenzen's struggles. And it's short short sample size, but small ballpark. Gerardo Parra hitting well. Lorenzen not pitching well. That's a, that's a recipe for su- some success tonight. And uh, I'll have some shares of him in all formats as well. Right. Um, you want to go through a lineup real quick? Or? Sure. Okay. So here's what I have, just clicking in the, the some of the players that I mentioned. Uh, for FanDuel, I have cash game. Clayton Kershaw, Matt Waiters, David Ortiz, Cesar Hernandez, Luis Valbuena, J.J. Hardy, Adam Jones, Cole Calhoun, and Nolan Rabel. So I have the Baltimore stack in there. Um, The only one I'm kind of taking a leap of faith on, I think, is Valbuena. As we mentioned earlier, I think that's a calculated risk with some upside. So if you're going to pick one spot to, you know, kind of take a gamble, um, you you might as well go upside. So that's what I'm doing with Valbuena there. Yeah, yeah, definitely there. I mean, I think I think like we said earlier, the safe play there is Matt Carpenter, but obviously Matt Carpenter doesn't have the upside that Louis Valbuena does. I mean, he's got massive power. So so one one alteration I can make to this is go chop down waiters, go with Sal Perez, um, bump up Valbuena to say Manny Machado if you want to get him in. Um, and then switch J.J. Hardy out for someone with a similar price range like um, Eduardo Escobar, Xander Bogarts, um, guys like that. So yeah. that's, I mean, that's that's a pivot that I would consider making, um, especially if I'm going multiple lineups. Yeah, it looks like ultimately ultimately there it comes down to whether you want to get Manny Machado or Matt Wieters in as your uh, your additional Baltimore bets. So if you have yeah. a guy you like more, use that lineup, alter it a little bit there, and uh, I think it's in a good spot, especially if uh, Valbuena gets a hold of one tonight, which... As we know, moonshots as soon as he does. Yes. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out Colossus, our optimizer, and a lot of great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.